without further ado, I'd like to introduce Will Willis, Spider alum and co-founder of Bully Boy Distillers, which is the first craft distillery in Boston. I'll pass it over to Will now to share a bit more about himself, his distillery, and this, ha and let's get this happy hour started. Thank you very much, and uh, hello, spiders everywhere. Um, it's a, a first for me doing this, uh, and I was having a good time looking online and seeing some of the other offerings that the university's uh, putting out there. I noticed there's a yoga class, so maybe some of you did a yoga class. That might have been your detox, and now we're going to take care of your retox. <laughs> um, joining me is our one of our veteran bartenders, Eric Ball. Hello. And I'm sort of going to play the role of you all. Um, my brother and I like to joke that we're, we're great at making booze, but we're terrible at mixing it. So um, my idea of a cocktail is generally a bottle of booze and a Cuba ice. Um, Eric's going to uh, make a little magic for us. And I'm sort of going to play the role of a guinea pig. And he's going to be my sensei. Um, and I guess just real quick, a background, you can see a little bit of the distillery. We're, we're in our, our tasting room, um, which is, of course, has been closed now. We're in, we're in Boston, Massachusetts, and um, all restaurants closed here uh, March 18th. So um, we've continued uh, our production um, for liquor stores and actually we recently started making uh, hand sanitizer, which we're using in uh, copious amounts. Um, but just the 30 second background, my brother Dave and I started uh, the company 2010, sort of lifelong uh, hobbyist enthusiasts, nights and weekends type of thing. Um, I guess very innocently, it started out as little kids making apple cider. Our uh, grandfather had a small farm in Sherburn, Massachusetts. We made apple cider on a little five gallon cider press. And then during the teenage years, it uh, sort of got into hard cider. And then uh, uh, eventually we sort of, uh, we had a little two gallon stovetop still that we cook up uh, this hard cider in sort of a, a breaking bad moment and, and turn it into uh, apple brandy or apple jack as some call it. And um, just fell in love with the whole science of it. It was pretty horrible tasting stuff to start with, but over the years we refined our recipes and uh, eventually got confidence to open up in 2010 and been kind of going strong ever since. So, um, oh, and the name Bully Boy, our, our grandfather had a horse named Bully Boy. He was a big fan of uh, Teddy Roosevelt and the expression uh, bully for you, which I probably learned about in some English class at, at University of Richmond, but um, no one really says it anymore, but I guess it's, it's sort of a way of saying um, good for you. Um, so without further ado, um, Eric's gonna, <clears throat> what do we got first? Uh, We're gonna start with the daiquiri. Daiquiri, okay, so the daiquiri, yeah. I would say daiquiri kind of maybe a litmus test for any any, any knowledgeable bartender right. should kind of know how to make a daiquiri, right? Correct. All right. Yep. Switch up. I don't. So, but. Um, sure. All right. right. What do we do? So first we're going to grab our, our, our tin, yep, our Boston shaker. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to start building. Uh, this ingredient has three components to it. Uh, citrus, sugar, and spirit. So we're going to grab our lime juice. Okay. Going to get grab our jigger. We're going to measure out three quarters of an ounce. Three quarters of an ounce. All right. Sort of eyeball it here. Yeah. All right. Yep. You're going to put that right into Down the, the tin. Uh, next, we're going to grab our simple syrup. It's going to be three quarters of an ounce as well. All right. And uh, for the folks who, uh, I'm assuming you guys know how to make simple syrup. I, I don't make any assumptions. But given that I know how to make it, I'm going to assume you guys know how to make it simple syrup. What, what's the general uh, breakdown? One, one to one water to sugar. So we, what we do here is a cup of water to a cup of sugar. And we'll just blend that um, together and, and heat it up into a saucepan until the sugar is, is uh, gone. So it's all good. Gotcha. All right. All right. So now we're going to add our spirit. We're going to be using our rum. Awesome. Uh, we're going to do two ounces of rum. I like it. A little extra firepower. Yeah. So, uh, two ounces is sort of your... Uh, what's your standard cocktail as far as liquor uh, ounces? Is it is two standard or is it one and a half or what? Uh, two, two is, is standard. All right. Okay. All right. So now all our ingredients are in our tin. We're going to fill it with ice. Got it. Yep. I'll never yell at a bartender again to hurry up. Yeah. All right, so now you're gonna grab your small tin, you're gonna cap it. Make sure it's on an angle. Yep, perfect, just like that. Just make sure it's really in there. 
give it a little tap on the top. Yep. When you're shaking, you want the smaller part, the smaller tin behind you. And you just want to start shaking for about 10 seconds or so until that tin is a little bit frosted. You don't want to overshake it, you'll dilute it a little bit, you'll, you'll incorporate that water from the ice. Sure. Don't, don't overshake, you said? No. Nope. Right. A couple more shakes and you'll be good. Yeah. All right. All right. So once you shake for 10 seconds or a tin's frosted, you're going to want to take that top part off. Sometimes it's a little tough. Feel a little hit on the side if you can't get it off. All right. We're going to grab our strainer. We're going to use a, a Hawthorne strainer. And then just for us, we're going to use a double strainer. Um, okay. So put that right on top of the tin. Hold on to that. Right over the glass. All right. I'll help you. Two-man job. Normally yeah. I guess you guess. The reason we're using this double strainer is that um, there are little ice chunks that get caught up in it. And we just want this to be a smooth cocktail. Perfect. Now, if you don't have a coupe, any, uh, what's a good backup uh, vessel? Martini glass will work well. Right. Um, you can even put it into a rocks glass. Right. Of course, if you have the coupe, you're going to impress the neighbors. Yeah. And then we dump the, ice. dump the ice. And then we're just going to garnish this with a, we have a dehydrated lime wheel. All right. And then that is our daiquiri. Now, normally we would uh, sip two straws, a little uh, Lady of the Tramp style, but Tonight, this is all mine. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> all right, cheers, everybody. Hope uh, hope that went smoothly. Definitely went down smoothly. So <laughs> we'll save that one for later. Um, I got to drive home, but you know, maybe maybe a few more sips before I hit the road. Um, all right. All right. Number two. Two. What do we what do we got? What are we what are we thinking? What do we got? Let's do uh, let's do an old fashioned. All right. Let's switch it up a little bit. Let's do a, do a rum old fashioned, a freehand old fashioned, if you will. All right, so old fashioned, yeah. generally a whiskey drink, but we make a lot of rum here. We make a lot of everything here, but um, being in Boston, a uh, long, rich tradition of rum making. So um, the rum old fashioned is a little bit of our local twist on a classic cocktail. What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing? So for our vessel, we're going to make our cocktail. We're going to use a mixing glass. Okay. Okay. So we start with a mixing glass. A pint glass will work as well, um, or, or a tin if you have it. And then we're going to start with our bitters. So we're going to do two dashes of orange bitters. Okay. Can you use uh, like Angstor bitters? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're doing orange bitters though, because we're we like to play by the rules. And we're going to do Angstor bitters as well. Oh. We're going to switch it up. Yeah. Can do two dashes of the Ango too. You can look that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we have our bitters into our mixing glass. So did I do enough of that? Like That's perfect. Six yep. Drops. Two drops. Okay. Two. Yep. You nailed it. Sorry. Nice job. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna add in our uh, simple syrup. So we're gonna do a half ounce of simple syrup. Okay. So grab your jigger. Just measure out a half ounce. Perfect. All right. Half uh, ounce of simple going in. Yeah. And now we're going to use our rum. Um, cool. Use the co-op. Yeah, that's yeah. great. All right. All right. So real quick, the first one we did. This was just a white rum. Um, the most universal, globally known white rum would just be uh, you know Bacardi. Um, of course, we like to hold ours out as a bit more flavorful, and more interesting. But this is uh, a molasses-based rum that hasn't gone under barrel. So anything that's clear. Any, any spirit that looks like, you know, clear like water, just means it hasn't been barrel aged. The only reason a spirit turns brown, it has nothing to do with the base ingredient. It has to do whether it's been sitting in a barrel or not. So um, for, for this cocktail, we're gonna use uh, one of our barrel aged rums. And this particular rum is kind of fun. It's um, actually a partnership we formed with a, a couple other distilleries. And we brought in, uh, four other distilleries specifically, their 12 year rums, we blended it in with our own eight year rums. So we call it Rum Cooperative. And it's got nice sort of vanilla, butterscotchy notes. So think of like, you know, your, your classic sort of sipping style rums. Um, okay, so All right. uh, two ounces? Two ounces, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. So now our components are into our mixing glass. We're going to go ahead and add ice, and we're going to stir this cocktail. Okay. Reason being, we don't want to agitate the spirits too much in this cocktail, um, rather than that the last one we shook had citrus. So we really wanted to break that up. Um, so we're going to stir it. We're going to grab our spoon. 
If it's easier, feel free to put the glass on the table and stir. Yeah, that's probably yeah. nice soul, hint there. Great stir. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, I just want to stir this for about 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, you're really just trying to get the cocktail cold again, not really trying to dilute it any more than, than it needs to be. Right. So that should be should be all set. So we went ahead and we already put a large rock into our rocks glass. Okay. We're gonna grab our strainer, our julep strainer. Right. Now do you typically um, uh, just do, if you get a large ice cube, you'll just do one of them? Correct. Just okay. wanna keep the right way? Is this one? Yeah. Yeah. Just um, want to keep the um, the reason we use a large cube is just to again keep the cocktail cold without adding any extra dilution to to the cocktail itself. And the uh, if folks don't have um, like do they if if you don't have large, how do you make a large ice cube? I mean, not, it's not a standard size cube. So do they sell this kind of stuff. I don't know. Like so, we just go ahead. We we found uh, molds to to make ice okay. cubes. So we just found one. <laughs> And put it in. Um, it looks much better when you get one. If you have one. regular ice cubes at home, four or five cubes will yeah. be good. So now we're going to go ahead and do our garnish. Okay. Um, we're going to grab a lemon peel. All right. If you want to do that, just. Yeah, I better do that. All right. And where's this, where yep. this going? So what you're going to do. Going, not, not, not a good look, but it's my drink, yeah. so who cares? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to express the oils over the top of the cocktail, give it a quick wash around the rim, and then we're also going to grab. Yep. In orange. So it's, Same really, thing. it's really about, all about the zest there. You're just trying to get those oils in there. Just trying to get the oils in there. Um, what's really cool about cocktails, the taste is amazing, but also getting into the cocktail uh, with the scent right before you get in, it really opens up and gives it a different yeah, dynamic. Nice. Yeah. What's so, the, uh, sometimes you'll see uh, you guys will like light that on fire. That's yeah. always, I mean, we don't recommend that at all. That might yeah. be like the 201 class. Yeah. But, um, it's it's it's, it's cool. Some, it's, it's for sure. show. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta be careful. But um. Okay. We yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's our old fashioned. All right. Ready to go. Ready to go. All right. That's great. It's amazing, man. I feel like, you know, these bitters. It doesn't look like they're doing much, but it's incredible. It definitely is that sort of um, special sauce yeah. that elevates it from. You know, just your standard um, messing around at home to like uh, more not obviously your level, but but more than my level. It's 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 a it's a better yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're amazing. It really opens it up and it adds a little bit more depth to it. Just one dash would go a long way. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Hope everybody's uh, gonna save that one for later. <laughs> Shame we only have two sips. All right. All right. Let's get on. I'm sorry to. We don't want to um, rush you guys, but we just wanted to kind of give you exposure to working with some different spirits, um, a couple different sort of mixing techniques, and um, we know time is precious, so we're gonna we're gonna keep it keep it moving here. Um, and oh, I should mention too, by the way, if you uh, it's a little soft plug here, but if you do want to order any of our spirits, we recently partnered with a store in Rhode Island. Um, in Massachusetts, we cannot, we're not legally allowed to ship out of state. Rhode Island, the laws are a little more lax, and um, there is a store, Bridge Liquors in Newport. And if you go to our website, bullyboydistillers.com, um, you can click on the link there, and Bridge will, will ship anywhere in the country. So um, if you're curious to try some of this stuff, I uh, encourage you to do that. But if not, then I'm sure you guys got nice home bars uh, that are stocked at home. So, um, what we got next? Let's get a little crazy. All right. Let's amp it up crazy. a little bit. Let's do a um, let's do an egg white drink. Let's do a sour. Wow. All right. All right. You ready for that? It sounds dangerous, but um, you can I'm try ready, it. I'm ready for it. Are you? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and grab a, a small tin. All right. Reason we're starting out with a small tin on this because we're going to be cracking an egg. No, please. Yeah. I can do it for you if you no, like. No, I got uh, it. All right. So, so, so we're going to separate the yolk from the egg white. So open that up. Wait, oh, no, messed up. Yeah, yeah you, you told me that too late. I won't, I won't, I won't blame you. All right. So, All right. so and then, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to right, waste right. So, in a sour, what we're going to try to do, we're going to start with uh, an egg. We really just want to separate the, the egg white from the egg yolk. So, what I do is I just give it a little tap and then open it up. 
go from side to side, keep that yolk in the shell, and drop it in. And you should we'll... open a diner as a side business. Yeah. That's a lot of wasted jokes there. All right. Cash flow. I do have a quick question for you. Yeah. Do you. Do you know, Will, of a vegan substitute for a whiskey sour? So if someone doesn't want to use an egg white, is there a substitute that'll work? Great question. Chickpea water. Yeah. Chickpea water would work well. Chick yep. Chickpea water? Um, hope that resonates with the, 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 the questioner. I, I haven't heard of that. But. Yeah. Or we could just go um, a little bit more heavy on the simple syrup, too. Uh, the egg white's really just going to make it a little bit more frothy. Um, so if we add, a, uh, like, we're going to be putting in a half ounce of simple syrup, if we ramp that up to three quarters of an ounce, then it'll still have that same consistency and it'll still have that same mouthfeel going uh, into the cocktail. All right. Great. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, okay. What's next? So we're going to do uh, lemon juice. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Right. So we're going to grab our jigger. Yep. And we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Perfect. And then we're going to grab our simple syrup. Yep. It's going to be three quarters of an ounce of the simple syrup. Generally, is that is that a general rule of thumb with, in cocktailing? Like you're, you're kind of balancing your sweet and your sour? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You really want to find that middle ground. Um, a lot of times people come up and they don't want something too sweet yep. or something too sour. So they, yep. uh, they work well together. Um, we're going to use our yep. American straight whiskey. Great. Right. So uh, four years in the barrel. Uh, mash bill is 45% corn, 45% rye. Your, your corn's giving your sweetness. Your rye gives you sort of your, your, your spiciness. And then 10% malted barley. So when my brother and I first started out, um, we felt it was, it was sort of part art, part business. We, we kind of felt as though the bourbon category was really, really crowded. And we wanted to, I mean, the hardest thing about making a whiskey is you don't know how it's going to come out four years later. And so you just sort of hedge our bets. We were just starting out. We did a whiskey that kind of strikes that balance between sort of that sweetness and that, and that spiciness. Um, we call it American straight whiskey. Uh, the straight is actually a legal term. It, it, it means it's, it just denotes that it's been aging for at least two years. Um, again, you'll notice obviously it's a brown spirit. So it, it's been aging in a barrel. We use 53 gallon um, American oak barrels, number three char. We buy the barrels from a place called Kelvin Cooperage, which is based in Louisville, Kentucky. And we fill about uh, 14 a month. So with that, um, what are we doing? We're gonna do two ounces. Okay. Okay. All right. So now, because we have the egg white um, yep. in our cocktail, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is just cap the, the tins without any ice. Okay. We're gonna do a, a dry shake first. Uh, reason being, we really wanna break up that egg. Um, yep. Yep, so the small tin behind you. Yep, wait, wait, wait. Is that on the bottom or on top? On top. Sorry. Yep, keep all that. Yep, so we're really just trying to incorporate that egg white in there. Um, it's going to start to emulsify the cocktail. It's better to get a little bit more air in there until before we add the ice. Okay. So give it a good shake, just like you would if there was ice in there, uh, yep. 20 seconds. All right. All right. Looks good. All right. All right, so you're going to take off that tin, and now we're going to add in our ice into that tin. All right, cap it. Yep. And really shake it this time. All right. Move for about 25 seconds. You really want this one to be cold and you want to continue to break up that egg white. Yeah. I see you guys doing this with two hands and or you got, you got like you're doing one yeah. you guys. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Oh, you will. <laughs> You're graduating. All right. Seems to be all right. And me, how do you feel? Are you tired? Are you tired? Oh, it's tired. Yeah. Oh, it's tired. Yeah. I'm ready to drink. All right. So again, we're gonna we're gonna strain this. We're using a coupe. Feel free to use any glass you want. We're not gonna add any ice to it. So if you have a low ball um, glass, that will work well. Um, we're just gonna put it on a little stem. So we're okay. gonna grab our Hawthorne strainer yep. and our double strainer. Okay. So grab that. Yep. Cool. Do you want me to hold it again? Uh, uh, you know what, man? Yeah, do it. I'm going crazy. I can deal with this. Yeah, so we're going to double strain right in. Trying to keep those ice particles out. You really want it to be a smooth cocktail. That's what the, that's what the second the strainer is doing? Yeah, that's what it's doing. It's, it's grabbing all those little ice chunks. and. 
because when you shake, you're really breaking up those ice cubes. So, yep. All right, give it a little a couple taps on the side of the strainer. Looks good. Perfect. Is that embarrassing when you got an audience and things won't empty out? I don't know. Ask your audience right now. <laughs> this is the beauty of Zoom. You no know, feedback is great. All right. All right. So we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna do a little little artwork. Uh, if you have a, a lemon peel, you can express the lemon on top. i will open up the drink. But I'm gonna have Will do a little bit of artwork. He's gonna put some drops right on top. Nice man. It's like a little latte yeah. uh, heart or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Yep, just drop them in. Perfect. And we're just gonna come across and just make our own design. Try to make a horse. Jeez, I was waiting for the horse, man. Yeah. That would have been impressive. It's more. Yeah, sure. That is a sour. That is a classic sour. Yeah, right. A little citrus is gonna be balanced. An egg white is really gonna yeah. froth it up a little bit. So it's a great mouthfeel to it. It's almost creamy. Yeah. <clears throat> That's amazing. I love it. And it's nice too, because now we have a little bit of, we've got some rum drinks, yep. we got a whiskey drink. And I think, um, as far as whiskey drinks go, this is really approachable. It's not, you know, again, like, to your point about the balance, it's got a nice balance between citrus and sweet. Yeah. Uh, for folks that like, might be turned off by the sort of smoky oakiness of whiskey, this isn't, it's dialed back a little bit. I, I'd say this is a, a great way to impress the neighbors. Yeah. Well, of course not neighbors now, maybe impress the <laughs> roommates. Um, okay, how are, we, uh, how are we doing on time? Do we- uh, We can do one more if y'all wanna go ahead and do one more. Do it, all right. Awesome, thank you. I think we're, uh, we're, we're audible right now. We're, we're, yeah. we're, off, we're off script. Do you wanna uh, do a, a classic martini? Show people how to do a martini or do you wanna go a little bit what are you feeling? I think, you know, I, I feel like a martini is a drink that a lot of people think they know how to make. Yeah. But maybe they, they don't really know how to make it correctly or, or make it well. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's, let's do a martini. Yeah. I like, I like yeah. to teach a martini. Everybody. All right. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our mixing glass again. All right. Okay. One of those. Again, yep. a pint glass will work just as well. All right. Okay. Uh, I like to start this cocktail from doing a classic gin martini with two dashes of orange bitters. All right. Kind of put your best. Yeah, it's perfect. Then we're gonna add in a half ounce of sweet vermouth. All right. Sorry for the uh, noise in the background. We have um, our guy Max is just finishing up uh, the daily run. So we do generally the, the the production cycle starts at about seven in the morning, and on certain days it'll run till about six thirty seven o'clock at night. Um, we do generally uh two one or two barrels a day if we're doing whiskey other days um if we're doing rum or or, or, or gin or we do some liqueurs the, the quantities can vary but um generally the production is about 12 hours a day and then in the normal world it's showtime for these guys um but given where we are right now um this room behind us will shut down in a, in a few minutes and and um the lights will go dark that was a depressing way to end that. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's, let's get back to the martini. All right, uh, uh, so we have our two dashes of orange bitters, right? Then yep. we did our half ounce of our, of our dry vermouth. Yep. Um, Sajin? Sajin, okay, I great. like to work with that. So. Okay, so um, <clears throat> 94 proof. Um, gin is a really fun one to work with. It's, you're essentially taking a neutral background, sort of a vodka, and to that you're adding um, spices, botanicals, uh, and, and fruit. Um, in this case, it's got a fairly a lemon forward. Um, juniper is the sort of defining um, characteristic of gin. So that, that sort of that pininess, that's, that's um, a definitive quality to gin. Our, our sort of local angle is that the neutral base has, uh, is 30% apple. So we, we, take our, we make our own in-house apple brandy and then we'll blend that in with a neutral grain base. Um, so it's, it's yeah, it was, um, a really fun one to for us to make and and um, a fun one to drink. So yeah. okay. we're gonna do uh, two and a half ounces this time. So we have our half cool. ounce All right. of the vermouth in. We're gonna do two and a half to bring that cocktail to three ounces. All right. All right. We're gonna add ice to our mixing glass, whatever we're using, the pint glass. Or... All right. Yeah. You're gonna add ice. And you're gonna stir in this cocktail. Right. Yeah. 
That's a common misconception. Yeah, that's a, that, that'd be like a, I like a, to start, a, a fairly yeah. big rookie move, right? Nah, it, so, it, it should always ask what people want, but I, I think, yeah. A little controversial. Yeah, yeah. stirring okay. is a. Uh, uh, what do I do with the stirring spoon? So we're going to grab our spoon, stir away. All right. Was that like the James Bond thing? That was like shaking, shaking out the stir. Yeah. Nah. Sorry. I mean, don't be. All right. Yep, give it a good stir. Just try and get that, that cocktail cold and incorporate all the flavors and the bitters. Again, we don't want to do it too long, so we don't want to add extra dilution from the ice. What's it? Sorry, what's it? Now, a lot of people do a vodka martini. Yep. Is that, that's that's perfectly acceptable, right? Oh, yeah, okay. of course. All right, but gin is sort of the original? Yes. Yeah. We actually do have a question in the chat about what bitters you would use or what you would use if you were making a vodka martini. I'll defer to Eric on that one. A vodka martini? You know, I I, I wouldn't use any bitters if I was doing a vodka martini. Um, yes. Which is something about, oh, for vermouth or bitters? No, no, no. no oh. Yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah. with you. Um, I would just do the two and a half ounces of the spirit of the vodka and a half ounce of dry vermouth um, and then leave that one be. Uh, for me, with a vodka martini, I like a couple olives, so you're going to get some of the flavor off the olives. Um, in a gin martini, I like to do just a little bit of a lemon expression, uh, and the orange bitters really help that uh, open up a little bit. So for the vodka, I would just do the spirit and the vermouth. All right. Yep, strain perfect. In. You're going to strain in. Yeah, so these are pretty lethal. I mean, that's a, that's a three ounce. Yeah. Three ounce drink. All right. So for me, I like to do a, uh, a lemon zest. So grab your, right. your peeler and a lemon. Right here. All right. Sunset doing it. Yep. yep. Want to get a good, yep. So you're going to, you can peel away. Just don't hurt yourself. I'm, yep. I'm terrible at that. So, no, you're fine. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get my lemon peel and then I'm just going to express it again. Just squeeze the lemon a little bit right over the top. You'll see the oils come out. Do a little run, and I like to just drop that lemon peel right in. Um, you're gonna get that yes. citrus from the lemon peel, but also when you're when you're drinking this martini, because of the, the notes that we have in this gin, particularly, you're gonna get a little bit more of that lemon note. So it's a really nice summer cocktail, uh, really smooth. It is lethal. It is two and a half ounces of booze with your uh, half ounce of vermouth, but really classic. It um, yeah. and well, cheers. So bad, I thought I was drinking. <laughs> it's all right. I was on my share. So this one's really reliant. And the only reason I love a martini is it allows you know, our craft to express itself. It, it, you're really, it's, it's a very alcohol forward drink um, as opposed to you know, some drinks that will mask the flavor. This one, if, if you're, you, know, you need to make it well, but if you're making a good product, it really is it's a great uh, showcase yeah. drink for that. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Um, all right, well, uh, cheers, everybody. I hope um, you all had fun and um, had a nice little uh, break from the, the craziness of this world uh, that we're living in right now and uh, that you're staying safe. And um, cheers. Have a great night. Cheers, guys. All right. Thanks so much, Will. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up so everyone can get to their cocktails. But again, thank you to all the attendees for joining us. Um, I hope you'll all tune in for our upcoming programs, including tomorrow's virtual alumni concert featuring Bart Chucker at 5.30 p.m. Remember to check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the alumni website for further information and to stay up to date on what's coming next. If you want to host your own demo for your fellow alumni, please feel free to email us or reach out via social media. Hope to see you soon. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and go, go spiders! spiders! <laughs> everybody. Thanks, man. You guys are